you know, I was just thinking about doing something. I'm making these doors and I was wondering if maybe anybody would like to see the difference between a router table um, doing a raised panel and a shaper doing a raised panel. Because there might be people out there that just don't know what the difference is. I figured, you know, might as well, you know, show you guys two things. One is how to do a raised panel on the router table as well as what the difference is if you use the shaper, you know, power wise, um, safety wise, you know. Now, if I want to make the um, raised panel, what I have to do is two things. I have to um, open up these fences and I have to remove my insert ring because the raised panel is bigger than that insert ring. And for this particular job, I'm going to use what's considered a S panel. Some might call it a, an OG panel, but it's this one. Now we're matching doors that they already have in their kitchen. So that's why we're using this particular panel. And um, this just happens to be uh, a, a raising bit that I actually have also in my one of my shapers. So I'll show you that too. So I drop this down to uh, basically the lowest speed, which in this particular router's case is, uh, I think it's 10,000 RPM. This is the, um, in fact, let me, let me, I just look, looked at that scale, but it didn't actually slow it down. This is the Milwaukee um, three and a half horsepower because the height of your, um, the uh, panel raising bit is going to be determined by your material thickness and whether or not you're going to be using a back cutter. A back cutter is essentially a profile that's going to remove material from the back of the, the um, profile. Allows it to sit in the groove in the middle of the panel versus if you didn't use that, for instance, this particular case. This one, I did not use the back cutter and I wanted this to be standing proud of the um, surface of the door. So this actually raised out above the top of the surface. So this, this was used pretty commonly for quite a while, um, that particular profile. And this is a nice profile. It definitely is, is nice and you know, everything's pretty straightforward with this. It fits in the grooves just like that, right? Perfectly. But more importantly, when it's all done, it sits up above. Let me see if I can put a straight edge on that. You can see how it sits up above the surface of the rails and styles. So this really is a raised panel. Now, if you don't want that, you have to do what's called a back cutting profile. That guy, that profile is going to allow this piece to sit in there and be essentially sandwiched in. So you see how it's shallow there. And then let me come over here. And you can see how it's lower, almost flush. You know, you, it's all about what your personal preference are already on it. See that? It cut that profile in one go. Now I'm not using that particular profile. So I'm going to put that one away for height and I can set it up for depth. Just the same as you would on a shaper, except for on a shaper, you're working with your material face up. And that's a nice feature because every um, panel, let's say you were doing a lot of work and you were doing solid wood doors and they were stain grade, maybe the doors were slightly varied in thickness. This would be a really good um, uh, way to do it on the shaper because you've got the material thickness could be slightly varied and that's going to be, that's going to be um, a problem with your um, tongue with the router table. But with the shaper, because the materials face up, 
your um, profile gets gets uh, shaped into it from the um, bit like this. So it comes up on it and this is how it produces it. So regardless of your material thickness, you're ending up with the exact same thickness here on everything. So that's a really cool feature of the shaper. But here, you, you, it works differently, right? The um, profile is like this, so we have to actually flip the piece over. And now we have that. So if there's any variation in thickness with this piece, it's going to change the tongue thickness on every piece. So the depth is essentially going to be the um, profile maxed out with the bearing being touched. So all I have to do is take this guy and tap this. Now, as far as the placement of the fences, I want those to be pretty much as far out as possible because I don't want them to interfere. So I'm going to tighten that down. Now I'm going to tighten this one down. Now I'm going to tighten this guy down. I believe it's good. And this is one of those things where um, you've got a, a, an open space here. It's pretty large, right? So if you're doing um, small stuff, like, you know, really, really small pieces, you probably wouldn't be using a raised panel, but if you were, and you were doing small panels, let's say for a drawer front, and you had, you know, pieces that let's say were that wide, and you're running these things through, that's pretty small. So you're gonna need to put push blocks on this in order to support that. Um, otherwise it could tip in there. Um, so you wanna be extremely careful when you're routing small pieces. Uh, even when you're routing big pieces, when you first start off, they could tip in. So make sure you're pushing up against the fence nice. You would just tap it until it touches the bearing. And pull it away just a hair. I don't really need to touch the bearing. All right, right there, that's perfect. And um, I can take a full cut on this, but uh, if you don't think your router, maybe you have a um, smaller router, you definitely want to take multiple cuts. Uh, and if you're cutting regular string, um, MDF, take more than one cut because regular MDF is a little more dense uh, than this. So um, I would for surely recommend using multiple cuts. Hidden. So I want the profile to be deep enough to pronounce that lip right there. So I'm just keeping the top here lower than that part by about an eighth of an inch, because I want to back cut this. Um, the depth of cut is going to be maxed out. And if you feel like you need to take multiple cuts, um, obviously lower it, raise it as you um, make passes. So you'll do one pass, then you'll raise it, then do another pass and raise it, and do it until you get to your proper um, depth where it's, the groove is going to be perfect all right, I'm going to make some test samples for this door. So I need to make four panels. I've got my panels over here, and I need to make my um, cuts with this raised panel bit. So I'll do them on the router table, and then I'm going to do one on the shaper just to show you the difference between the two. But let me first, um, this is at full height, you know. I'm taking a full cut on this guy. And
Now, the next step is going to be to back cut that guy to fit into my quarter inch groove. This is my uh, bowl cutter. So this is what I use for my back cutting now. And I'm going to put the speed back on full speed. That's to make sure that I do is put this insert ring back. So when I made this um, setup here, what I did was I actually took out, oh, I made a hole and then I rabbited it to fit my, um, this is a Russo plate. And I actually um, notched where it had little notches here. So I'm using the factory notches in this and then um, corresponding notches in the actual um, opening there. So it locks in there pretty nicely. So it's a really good um, setup for a, you know, I don't have to have some fancy plate and uh, nothing gets, it doesn't snag on anything. So it's uh, very nice. And that sample panel I'm gonna use so I can, uh, you know, make sure I get the, get the setup right before I sacrifice one of my doors. Basically, I just want to get the space in there. It doesn't need to be that big, so. All right, now as far as the depth go, I'll probably just go ahead and match that. It's about three quarters of an inch. That's about what the typical distance is, so I'll just sample door. And um, this door is the same thickness as the other. <laughs> That's a little tight. I'm gonna make that a little bit looser. So I'm gonna raise the bit up. All right, that's really good. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. Pull the shaper out and uh, pull it out just to have a little more um, visibility for the camera. Um, now it's not plugged in and uh, what I want to do is um, change the height on this because um, normally this this guy is set up to take a full pass and um, give me that full effect of that raised panel um, so it actually would come out of the surface of the rail and style um, which means it's above right the surface of the rail and style so to me that's the um that's the classic raised panel look now if you want it to be even what you need to do is you need to put the panel in the middle and have a back cutter so i went ahead and actually since i already did the back cutter on the router table with the others i decided to do that as well with this just to make it exactly the same so now i'm going to take this guy and i'm going to make the raised panel part with the back cutter already in so that I can make sure I get the correct um, thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a pass and I'm just gonna show you the difference between using the shaper and the router table with a um, raised panel bit. Now this is a um, insert profile cutter so I can change the profile of this. All I have to do is unscrew these guys and actually change out that profile. So uh, this is a really cool set and um, you know, if you're making a lot of doors and you want different profiles, this is definitely the way to go. Um, and these are carbide inserts. So um, this is very, very nice. It's at, right now you can see that little gap right there, the, the panel with that um, back cutter on there. I basically need to um, raise it up that amount. Um, but uh, let, me, let me try that and see how that works. Okay, now this is a custom fence. You'll notice this is not the standard fence. And I really like these. I mean, this is an absolute must for me. Um, this is a uh, fence. I make these on all my shapers. And what it does is it totally encloses um, shaper knives. And I've got this uh, piece here that essentially acts as a uh, hold down, but it also covers up the actual spinning knives. So it's really nice and 100% dust collection. So let me go ahead and this on. 
Now the way I set it up is I just, I use this, um, this piece here to put pressure, downward pressure on it, and that's it. I don't need to do anything else. There's no um, feathers on it, there's no, you know, that's just a solid piece. And now look, as I feed it through, this piece is rock solid in there. It can't lift up, nothing. But it's got a nice, nice action to it. As you slide it through, it just does that. I mean, it's just perfect. I'm gonna put you right at the level of the cutter. And then uh, maybe I'll put another camera on top so you can see the dust collection sucking it out as well. Here. So obviously that's where it goes to and it touches the um, piece right there, there. All right, so make sure that's locked down nice and tight and we're ready to go. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and turn the power on and fire up the dust collection and we'll get you going. Obviously you saw that thing cut, um, it's, it's seriously effortless, but let me uh, see how this fits in here. It's probably a little loose, but, oh look at that, man, first try, that thing's perfect. Alright, let me do the rest. Dust collection is a must, hearing protection is a must, however this machine is probably quieter than the router. It's for surely quieter. That just, it's awesome, right? I mean, so you can see here, if you look down, there is no dust. There's nothing. Look at that cut. Tell me that's not freaking ridiculous. So that's just butter. The, the finish is really good, especially when you do solid wood panels, um, but this is just like butter. So it's just one of those machines. Now I can do this same thing, the exact same speed with solid wood doors. So no question there. Um, it plows it just perfectly and leaves it absolutely perfect finish. There's complete safety, right? You're not, you don't have to worry about this big opening. Um, the router table does have a big opening, but you notice I put the feather board in front of it to block it. Um, but um, this guy, you know, the way that this is designed, this whole thing, it's just absolutely money. I mean, I can do this all day long, and at the end of the day, I'm left with barely anything inside there. And there Now, some of my um, fences, the shaper fences, uh, the plenums here, I actually have angled pieces right here. So in the corner, they're um, angled to collect that dust as it goes through. So those back corners... Um, have angled pieces. So um, this one doesn't have that, but like I said, normally, I mean, it's absolutely, you know, and there's nothing left in there. You just get a little static buildup with the plexiglass, but I love to be able to see what's happening and just to be able to run this machine and feel it, remove the material. It's such a satisfying feeling. Um, so if you are wondering if you should buy a shaper to do doors or if you should buy a router table to do doors 
if you're going to be doing a lot of raised panel doors and they're going to be solid wood doors, I would suggest trying to find a used shaper. Uh, this is a Powermatic and this thing's a monster. I mean, like I said, it's got the um, phase matic phase converter there. Um, so this is normally a five horse, uh, three, three phase ball door motor and um, it's running on a single phase. So it's probably a little less than five horsepower um, from the phase converter, dropping it down just a little bit. But I mean, it is just like butter. So if you can find a used uh, machine like this, I would suggest do that and get one of these insert cutter heads because these insert cutter heads are um, actually relatively inexpensive. So if you figure the cost as you go through for uh, many different profiles, you can get the profiles for a lot less than you can individual um, knives. So that would be my suggestion.